This is August the 2nd, and I want to share some things that, um, that has come to my knowledge. Um, first, we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to bless this upload. Make it fast and without any hiccups and no problems. Father, I ask you to send out your word, only your word, and only what you want to go out. Touch my eyes and my speech, Father. Touch my heart. Touch everyone within the sound of my voice. Make them such a warrior for you that they'll grab onto your train and then keep on pulling you closer and closer and learning more about you. Father, I give you all the praise to you. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit, and thank you for your Son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for what you did for us. And not only us, but the whole world. In Jesus' name. Well, I was... You know, like like a lot of people, they get uh, the events a little bit wrong, and they get all mixed up about it. And they also get mixed up that our Father God knows everything. He knows our hearts. He's all powerful, omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscience. And we're going to go through some truths here. The name of this study is uh, Some Truth Christians Should Be Concerned With. And I want to let you know, the reason my eye is black right here is uh, this past Monday I had surgery on my eye because my eye, I lost eyesight, pretty well lost eyesight in it, so they put a stent in it. And I thank you, every one of you, for praying for me, and I ask you to continue to pray for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, first off, uh, we're going to look at psalms 139 and i'm gonna talk fast because i only got as of now until my recorder comes in 30 minutes on this one here so this is proof that we were in god before we were formed in our mother's womb before we were on this earth hallelujah thank you father thank you psalms 139 13 to 16. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, uh, which in continuance were fashioned, uh, as of yet there was none of them. Hallelujah. He knew us before we were formed. That's all right. This is proof that we lived inside of him. We played in him. We lived in him. He knew us. Hallelujah. Okay, so I want you to take notice of verse 16 where it says, Unperfected, and the phrase, thy book. Keep that in mind. Okay, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Okay, this reminds me of what Paul said, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. We're going to go look at that. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. 1 Corinthians too far. At chapter 2 and verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So I'm overwhelmed with the love that Jesus Christ has. And at this moment, which every time I look at the study and read the Word of God, I am overwhelmed with the love that I feel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You know, truly He is faithful. And this reminds me of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24 faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it okay even though 
I may not be uh, faithful all the time, you guarantee he is faithful. So you stand on his word, you read his word aloud, you study it, you pray in tongues. You, if you don't have the gift of tongues, you seek the gift of calm, calm, tongues. You ask Father God for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I've found some other scriptures uh, about books, okay? Here's a couple of them, and we're going to look at them. Psalms chapter 56, verse 8. Psalms 56. Okay, in verse 8. Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle, are they not in thy book? Okay, it's telling us he has a book. So the tears that we cry, he puts in a book. Okay, and then we're going to look at Malachi Chapter 3, verse 16, Malachi, this is a book right before Matthew, so Malachi 3, and then verse 16, hallelujah, thank you, Father. Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. <clears throat> this is just an awesome, awesome verse here. You speak of him, you spread his word, and he writes it in the book that you're telling other people about his, about his word, about him, about his kingdom. Because what did Jesus do when he was on the earth? He talked about the kingdom. He spread kingdom. He was love. Hallelujah, and that's what he talked about, the kingdom. And another place is in Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. It gets me emotional because the love that comes out of these scriptures, when you truly ask for his presence, hallelujah, and you accept him. Whew, hallelujah, thank you, Father. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Hallelujah. So you see that is works don't get this wrong. Don't get this mixed up. Works do not get you into heaven. You have to accept the Son of God. You have to accept Christ Jesus as your Savior. He's the only way. He's the only door. He's the only salvation to the Father. Literally. And, and we know that. So don't get those two mixed up. Somebody told me the other, just today, well, we have to we have to be judged for our works because we've got to do that. No, honey. Um, if it, No, that's not what this is about. Works will not get you into heaven. Even Paul said it, we live by faith. Hallelujah. So we will ask, you see, we, we, we will be asked to give an account of every idle word we, when we stand in front of our Creator. And we're going to look at that. This is why we must repent daily. Let's look at what uh, Jesus said. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37. Matthew 12, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. You know I only have 30 minutes. And I can be a talker. Uh, Matthew 12, 36 and 37. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Remember that. He gives you free will. He gives you free will. Hallelujah. So even uh, even uh, in, in Psalms 103 and then verse 12, which I say that a lot because I love that one. It says that if we ask for forgiveness, he throws our sins as far as the east is from the west. Let's look at that. That is just one of my all-time favorites. Um, Psalms 103.12 As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. 
Okay, so keep this in mind. Like I explained before with the cup, right? Here's east and here's west. You go west, you never, you, you keep on going. You go east and you keep on going. You never meet. And I think that is an awesome illustration right there. Wow. So in conclusion, um, we're going to talk about what happens at the moment the rapture and then after that. Okay? So after the rapture, we go to be with Jesus. We go with Jesus to the Father's house. John 14, 1 to 3. Let's look at that. John 14. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Uh, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. Be, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay, and then, the, then uh, we will always be with him from that point on. Okay, so we're talking now about the believers, the true believers in Christ. Well, let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with this voice of the archangel, and with a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. What a promise. What a promise. Okay. Now, here's another thing that even uh, I was like, okay, I got to search this out because uh, I couldn't even tell you where this stuff was about the Bema seat. Now, let me uh, to explain a little bit about a Bema seat. Okay. Bema is, means... It means reward, okay, or a place of reward. And you find this in the, with the Romans. You find this in the Olympics. So in other places also. But uh, for the sake of time here, I'm talking about the Bema seat. And it's the judgment of God when the, the, uh, the true believers go in the rapture, right? Because it's not me going in the rapture. I just showed you that. And they're standing before the Creator, our Creator, the God of the universe, and He hands out He hands out uh, rewards for what you did. Okay, and let's look at this. So, for Second uh, Corinthians, chapter five, verse ten and eleven. Second Corinthians, okay, chapter five, and verse ten and eleven. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the uh, terror of the Lord, we, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also, um, uh, I trust also, are man are made manifest in your conscience. So what he's saying is, we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and he's going to we're going to receive the rewards for whatever we did. Now at this point, we've already been judged because we accepted him on earth, and we've already been filled with the Spirit. So we've been judged, and we're going through the fire every day. After you accept Christ, in fact, before that, because Satan knows that, you know, there's a possibility he hates humans, period, because we're made in the image of God. So the thing is, he knows that there's a possibility that you'll accept him. See, God's given you free will. You can either accept him or, re or, or reject him. Now, if you accept him, it's, uh, he promises you eternal life with him. If you reject him, it's eternal separation, which is hell. Okay, you'll be eternally separated from him. Now, um... Uh, let's look at this before I go on. Romans 14, 10 to 12. Romans chapter 14. Verses, uh, verse 10 to 
10 to 12. Romans 14, 10 to 12. Romans 14, 10 to 12. Um, but why dost thou judge thy brother? Why doest thou set it not thy brother? Um, for we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. And another one we're going to look at here is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as fire. Okay? So, what he's saying is, when we stand in front of the Bema Seat, that's where we get our rewards from our Creator, and He judges us on the works that we did, the intents of our heart, and we're going to get into that in a few seconds here. Uh, but this is what I'm talking about, okay? So there's the rapture where, where we meet Him and we meet Christ in the air. Well, actually, the dead in Christ have been rising for a couple years now. So then we all meet Him in the air after they've come up, because we don't know in what order that they're the dead in Christ are rising or who's first or whatever. Only God knows that. So that's, we know that, you know, so that's, it's been happening for a couple years now and well, several years now. So then we will meet them in the air. He says in the scripture, we will meet Christ in the air. So we will meet him on the clouds, in fact, and then we will go from there we, uh, instantly. Soon as we're taken up, our bodies are changed like Paul said, our corruptible body has to put incorruption on. This mortal has to put immortality on. And exactly like that. Like that, man. Faster than that. See, the word says a uh, twinkling of an eye. And so that is how fast that the change is going to take place. And, and so we'll, we'll go straight up with him. And with the dead in Christ, we'll meet them in the air. We'll meet Christ in the air. We'll meet dead in Christ, dead in Christ in the air. And then we'll go on to his father's house. So in father's house are many mansions. That's what the word says. So, um, and then after that, that's what I was talking about, the judgment seat. We go straight to get our rewards at the Bema seat. That's why I explained what the Bema seat was. It's where we're going to get the, it's for the Christians. The one that died in Christ is for our rewards of what we've done. Okay, so this reward judgment prepares us for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Okay, um, so during now, during this time is when the seven-year period. So as soon as we're raptured up, the seven-year period starts like that. And uh, then, then what goes on down here, you know what? We're not even going to be thinking about it. We're going to be having our rewards. We're going to be having our reunions. And we're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So like I said, during, uh, while the seven year tribulation is going on down here. Okay. This is what's happening. We're at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Okay. So before his second coming to the earth, the marriage supper of the Lamb takes place. What I just said. So, the uh, tribulation is described in Revelation from chapter 6 to chapter 20. And I couldn't see anything past that. Okay, because uh, after that, it describes, uh, like, uh, everything's new. The new earth, new Jerusalem. Um, Jesus coming down. The new city. <laughs> awesome. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Okay. Um, so... Uh, so we see that every thought, intention, motive, deed, good or bad work will be judged and rewarded accordingly. Okay? Now, mind you, like I said, somebody told me earlier, well, that we're going to be, uh, we're judged on our works. Well, no. It, when we accept Christ, we, we have a spiritual battle every day of our life. And, you know, it's being here. And then we accept Christ, and we've already been judged. So that's why... Um, when the rapture happens, dead in Christ in the rapture, and we meet in the air, our bodies are instantly changed into glorified bodies. 
and we go straight to the Bema Seat and receive our rewards. Now, in these books, this is just three of the books that I had told you about, and a couple other ones too, but um, I wanted to make a comprehensive in here, and I'm hopefully not even trying to go near the 30 mark here on the clock. Um, so we're going to, so he, like I said, he knows everything, and that's the whole thing, but he's going to judge us for, you know, for doing or not doing or for their intents of our heart. And if we spread the word of God, and if we won souls, I mean, there's a crown for all this. Running the race is a crown for a soul winning, there's a crown for a hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So this is why it's extremely important to ask Father Yahweh in Jesus' name to forgive you, pray in tongues, and search and seek in scriptures daily. Daily. And let me, as he, uh, let no sin left that has you know, that hasn't been put under the blood of Christ. It's like, it reminds me of Psalms chapter 91. But you have to stay in the covering of Christ. You know, and, and then we have to remember that. Okay, that's why you have to repent every day and ask for forgiveness and ask to be shown these. Because you, when you die, you do not want anything between you and your Creator. Say, so even if you think that you haven't done nothing wrong, humble yourself and say, I apologize, I didn't mean to hurt you, and if I did, forgive me. Okay, so I'm going to throw this into the end study, and hopefully it'll uh, dissipate some fears, you know. So there's four judgments. I don't have time to go into detail on a, a lot of these, like depth right now, but I can tell you there's four judgments. The church, which is the bride of Christ, which is the individual believers, remember? The church is a building that you meet in. The church itself is individual believers in Christ, okay? And we are the bride of Christ. Christ is our bridegroom, okay? So this is about our rewards, what we're talking about. That's what we're doing right now because the first judgment, and the, you know, we've already been judged. We go and get our rewards, okay? Then the second one is Israel. The third is the nations. And the, and the fourth judgment is the world, that's when God, that's when Jesus comes down and puts everything to a halt and does away with, uh, with uh, the evil, all the evil. Okay. Point is, have no fear of what doesn't affect us. So now I'm telling you that what happens after, you know, after the after the rapture or after the catching away, don't fear it. All you can do is do your best right now is tell your loved ones about Jesus and let them make the decision and pray for them. Because I seriously, and I don't think you, anybody listening to the sound of my voice would want anyone else going through the rapture. And because they got free will, they can tell you to buzz off. You know, and just remember that if, if when they reject you, you're saying, it's not rejecting you per se, they're rejecting Christ. Hallelujah, because remember, he's the word. Okay. So these, la these last three judgments have nothing to do with the children of God. And that's what I wanted to get across because there's so much fear. Uh, what's going to happen? Who's, who's the Antichrist? What's he going to make us do? And all this sort of stuff. And the fact is, if it, if it doesn't affect you, you just pray for others that they, make, that they make the rapture. Pray that they give their, their heart to Christ. Okay, and I'm going to end with a prayer I like ending with. You can just agree to it or you can rewind it and repeat it. God knows your heart. Father Yahweh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me of known and unknown sins. I ask you to show me any dark spots in me so I can repent of them. Father, forgive me for not forgiving myself. Father, I ask you to help me forgive myself and others that have hurt me. Father, of my own free will, I choose to forgive anyone that has caused me pain or injured me. I apply the blood of Jesus Christ over my sins, over these sins. Over Father, wash away my sins and the sins of the others that have hurt me or wounded me and the sins of my ancestors. Father, I ask in Jesus' name you apply your dunamis power to my soul wounds. Hallelujah. That's, that dunamis power raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Now I know my sins are forgiven and my soul wounds are healed. Father, in Jesus' name, I say thank you. I can't say thank you enough because it'll never do. Oh, Father, I say thank you again. Just thank you. I praise you for your faithfulness 
in Jesus' name. Now, what I want to tell you is the um, God instructed me to put a, a GoFundMe, and I figured I really hadn't figured out how to do that yet. I don't know. He instructed me to put up a, a PayPal, and I did that. PayPal.me forward slash knowledge for the glory, and I pray that um, that that uh, Father God will open the wallet of wealthy people because actually what I want to do is get this book out to people that are hurting and I, I have my six series on walking newness of life hill soul wounds but on my videos here my videos on my YouTube channel um, but this is what he wants me to do the books together the book is sitting in the public a Christian publisher's hands but they want thirty five hundred dollars and then on the top of that I'm gonna need another couple thousand several thousand in fact to get some product out but uh, this is what I was told to do so paypal.me forward slash knowledge for the glory and if you wish to donate I'd appreciate it no matter what in size it is and uh, God knows your heart he truly does well I appreciate you guys listening to me and thank you so much I love you you have a good night or day